Now that we've inserted our first component, the next component we need is going to be the shock. Now this was created as a multi-body part, so first we need to insert it as a subassembly. So let's open our file, navigate to a part document called shock multi-body. Now when we open this up, this is a single part file that has two solid bodies. We need to create an assembly from this. So what we want to do is select shock top and shock base by holding down either the shift or the control key, go up to insert, down to features, and over to save bodies. Now inside here, we'll select them and notice that the name of the component body inside of the SOLIDWORKS part file carries over into this area, shock base and shock top. When we scroll down, we have a consume cut bodies option. Now save bodies is gonna place a feature in the tree. Now this means that this feature can be suppressed, it can be moved around, so that way you can create features after the save if you don't want them to be exported to the assembly. If you select consume cut bodies, it will not only save these bodies out into their own file, but it'll also delete them from the current file. So we're gonna turn off consume cut bodies to make sure that we keep both of these bodies inside of this part file. Next, we wanna go down to the create assembly and browse. We're gonna select a location and we're gonna call this shock assembly. Now, when we select shock assembly, we still wanna make sure that both part files are selected and say okay. Now what happens is both parts are now exported into their own files and then an assembly is created for them. We're gonna rebuild and notice that we now have a feature in the feature tree called save bodies one. So if we go to our window, you'll notice that we now have shock multi-body, which was a multi-body part file, shock base, shock top, and shock assembly. So let's view shock assembly. What we've created is an assembly of two components. It has the shock base and it has the shock top. Now it's important to note that both components come in fixed. There are no relations between them. So we're gonna to have to create a subassembly, which is what we've done here, and apply some mate so that they move how we expect them to. So I'm gonna right click on shock top and I'm gonna to float it. So now that we floated the shock top, the base is still fixed, the top is free to move around. Now we wanna apply some mates between the two. I'm gonna apply mates in one way and then I'm gonna show you a separate way to do it. The first way is gonna be the quickest way to handle most of the standard mates. I'm gonna select the shaft of the shock top, control select the shaft of the bottom, and when I let go of the control key, we get a bunch of different options showing us the various mates that we can apply between these two. Parallel, perpendicular, tangent, concentric. We can lock the two components together, apply a distance or an angle relation. We're gonna select concentric, and now the parts can move up and down freely. The next thing I'm gonna do is control select the inside face of the bottom, and I wanna make sure that both of these are parallel. Now you notice that after I move the cursor around, I lost the quick context menu that pops up. So I'm gonna go up to the paperclip icon on my assembly tab and select mate. By default, it tries to make them coincident. What I actually wanna do is make them parallel. Coincident would work assuming that both faces are actually in the same line. But in this case, if they're offset at all, for instance, if the space between the bottom faces is larger than the space between the top faces, it'll actually turn and skew them just a little bit. So we wanna make sure that we keep them parallel in this case. We're gonna say okay, and now check the motion. It can move up and down, but notice that it no longer twists. Now in reality, this would twist a little bit and what would keep them together is really the tension that's placed on it by a spring, but we don't really have that available option right now. So we wanna make sure that everything stays in line how it's supposed to. The next thing we need to do is we need to figure out how to limit its distance. We obviously don't want this thing to come all the way out. So while we're still in the mate dialog, we're gonna rotate our view around and we're gonna select the bottom face here. We're gonna rotate around and select this face. Now by default, it tries to make them coincident. But what I actually wanna do is in my mate section, go down to the second tab, advanced mates, expand it, and we're gonna be placing a different type of mate here. Now inside the advanced mates, if we select this distance option, we can apply a minimum and maximum distance. So the minimum is gonna be zero. That's gonna be all the way down to bump. This dialog box here is the current position. If we place it at zero, you see it takes it all the way down. Now let's set this up to 300 millimeters and you see that it goes completely out of the shock body. If we set it to 250, it's still outside. But if we set it to 200, it falls just inside of the shock body. Now, this is a very simplified model meant to show different ways that we can apply these mates and create these assemblies. Obviously, there's a lot of components missing here. There are seals, snap rings, other things like that. 
This is again just to show how we can apply certain mates. So now that we know 200 millimeters is pretty much the extent of the travel that we're looking at, we're going to limit the maximum to 200 and say OK. Then we're going to exit out of our mate. So now the shock moves up and down a distance of 200 millimeters. So its max is 200 and its min is all the way down. So now that we've created this, we want to go ahead and save it, save all, and rebuild the document. Now we created our own assembly by taking a multi-body part, exporting the individual bodies, and making an assembly that way. You could manually insert parts, insert components, and create your own assembly that way. It's really only considered a sub-assembly when you insert it into another assembly, and that's exactly what we're going to do in the next section.